guys and welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Uh, before we get started, I just want to uh, do a shout out to Marian on my Discord server. Um, they created the texture for the uh, lumberjacks, as you can see here. They did a great job on it, and I just want to thank them uh, abruptly for designing the texture because I didn't really have time and stuff like that. So thank you very much for that. And uh, now we can get into our tutorial. So we're going to be covering trades today. And uh, I thought doing an NBC lumberjacks and some Northwest trees, it just makes sense to actually do something like that. So with that being said, if uh, you right click on, well, let's, let's start with how it works, how the baseline of the, what's going on. So when we place down a lumberjack, uh, in the background code, what happens is the lumberjack gets a random variable set to it for its trades. And what happens after that is it will be passed over to the player when the inventory is about to be opened. So when the inventory is opened, then the variables get passed on to the player, which will then determine what trades the player will see. So. It's a little bit of a complicated system. I hope that I'll be able to explain it. This is the second time recording, so I'm doing my best. <laughs> uh, we're gonna need a trade item, obviously. Uh, I used emeralds for this particular purpose. And if you place the emerald in the emerald slot, then it will generate the um, amount of items as well as the item type in the trade slot. Um, now if we remove the item uh, for the emerald slot, it removes the item as well. If we place it back in, then it will basically um, put the same trade into the same slot. If we remove that, it removes the emerald. If we have multiple emeralds in at a time, then it will remove just one emerald. So as you can see like that. And um, the only problem that I've noticed is if you shift and then try to take a stack from it, it doesn't take a entire stack. Rather than do that, it just uh, subtracts two emeralds for some reason. I'm not sure why it does that, but I can't figure out why. It's just a bug that I'm not able to sort out at this particular time. Um, However, if we press the next or previous button, we're on page one technically, so um, we're, we can't go previously, but if we press next, then it changes, quote unquote, the GUI. It's not really changing the page so much as it's changing a variable number. So if the vari variable number is different, then what it's gonna do is change the uh, variables that the item and the amount that will be displayed. So, for this particular NPC, it's uh, dark oak saplings, uh, two of them, jungle logs, and the last uh, page has eight planks. Uh, if you go to this particular entity, the trades will be a little bit different. So 16 dark oak logs, uh, 16 uh, dark oak saplings, and six or two uh, jungle planks. Uh, the trades will be different for each particular um, NPC. Um, it's randomly generated, so it will vary based on which one that you go with. So um, now I don't think. Okay, I guess. So you do get the item back if you close out with um, without um, actually trading. It puts it back into your inventory slot, which is good. Um, so with that being said, hopefully I did a good I, way to explain how it functions uh, because the code is really complicated and I don't think I'm going to be making much sense when it comes to being able to explaining how the code works, but um, I'll still give it a shot. <laughs> Uh, all right, so the lumberjack, uh, this is just a basic um, entity. I just quickly went through it. I changed it to a creature so it doesn't attack the player. Um, set the health to 20. A lot of these settings are the base property settings. Uh, the real fun comes into the um, actual entity when right clicked and on internal spawn. We'll start with on internal spawn because that's where the code basically starts from the ground up. 
So with that being said, uh, we're creating a MBT um, entity MBT data uh, variable, which is found under the entities tab. And then if we go scroll down, there's the number and logic, and then there's the string based um, entity variables that we can set here. I've used a number one and I've called it uh, random trade item one and then the random number. So I've done that for th three different types of items. So this will hold our number one will hold our uh, logs, number two will hold our uh, saplings, and number three will hold our planks. Uh, the next thing that we're doing is we're randomizing the count as well. So we're doing the same thing for the count itself. So we're doing random trade count one, that's for our logs. Two is for our, um, our basically our uh, saplings and three is for our um, planks. So if we expand the code here, as you can see, it goes into a little bit more on testing. I'm just gonna drag this out for the time being so you guys can kind of see it a little bit easier. So what's going to basically be done after the uh, random number is generated, we're basically testing for that random number and determining if it's equal to or greater than and then a number. So to calculate that number, what we need is to, um, I'll throw up the math equation uh, in just a second with the calculator. So we know that there are six types of planks and we need to determine basically um, how many, the, the values that we want to divide the random number in to give those six trades a chance of an equal value. So to do that, uh, we need to divide our, um, our full number. So a random number is between one and zero. So we would take that one and we would divide that by the amount of items that we want to set up for a trade. So in our case, it's six. Uh, it will give us a number like this. Generally, you want to use the first uh, three numbers in your point form. Uh, I believe I only used uh, 16 for this particular trade. It's close enough. Um, so what I've done is I've gone back to that one and then I've uh, subtracted 0.16 and then I've gotten uh, 8.4, which is roughly the right amount uh, number. I did it on a different calculator, so it's gonna be a little bit different. Um, my other one's not as accurate as probably this Windows calculator is. So what we can do with the Windows calculator or any other calculator usually is you can press equals if it works properly. Um, one minus zero point one six equals and then you can press equals again and then it will calculate the next number. And then you can do that until you reach your second to last number here. And that will be roughly around 16 or whatever. And then what you would do is you would set that to your final number to equal to or greater than zero. And then it will be uh, testing equally the amount of um, equally between the numbers. So how this is basically working is it's always gonna test for the first one first. So, um, it's going to test to see if uh, there is a equal to or greater than 0 0.83 and if that's true then it's going to run that. If it's not then it's going to move on to the next thing. Now this trade item, this is the ID that we're giving our item for the particular trade that we'll be carrying on in the later script. So one is oak um, two is uh, spruce, three is uh, birch, four is jungle, five is acacia, and six is um, the uh, dark oak. So with that being said, we've done that for um, our random trade one, random trade two, and random trade three pages. So these are the three pages that I've set up. Uh, for the random count, uh, same particular thing. We're testing for the higher number. Um, and then we're basically generating a, um, 
are this will be the number of how many items we're going to be in that particular spot so this in our case this is the lowest number if it's highest if the the number is equal to or greater than 75 only two items uh, 0 0.5 or greater than or equal to will be four uh, 0 0.25 or equal to or greater than will be eight and anything equal to or greater than zero which is the um, bottom uh, the last 25% chance it will be a 16% chance or 16 items sorry so with that being said I've done that for all the uh, random trade counts now that's important because um, when this is based on the internal spawn remember so when the entity spawns this will happen it'll be assigned those numbers so with that being said we can then right click on the entity and we're going to be passing over those variables to the player so to do this um, the current entity that is the NPC will be targeted on a right click event uh, from the lumberjack so when right clicked on entity this will be the main entity so this will be the event slash target entity so this would be the NPC side of things we're pat we want to pass over the variable that we've set to the player which will be the source entity because we're the source of the right click event so we're basically setting that to a variable name with a similar to it but we're setting it to a player tag so we're just putting player before it now with any mbt variable it's important to make sure that you um or any variable in that sense it's important to make sure that it's unique to your mod so i highly um if you're going to write your variable names that you go and you use your mod id uh, before your variable tag or for your tag name and uh, for this example it would be like something like um, trade example or something like that but uh, you would use your mod id in lowercase first and then your tag id behind it uh, that will make sure that there isn't any conflicts with any other mods that use the same tag um, that's important i haven't really discussed that too much but i noticed that that might be a further issue with compatibility with tags and you know any variable name for that matter so when the variables are passed over then we're also setting the uh, source entity which is our player to have a player trade page and then that will be equal to one and then we're opening the GUI screen so that's all that happens here I've basically set up the um, AI tasks to look something like this. We have it to panic um, when attacked. Uh, it's restricted to the sun, so it tries to find indoors if possible or some type of shelter. Uh, it wanders around with uh, speed factor of 0 0.6. It moves indoors if possible, opens and closes doors, looks around, avoids entity, um, any mob particular entity and it watches closely the player or multiplayer and then it can also swim in water so that's the only thing that uh or that's basically how i got the ai task set up and i have it to generate you might want it to despawn as well if you want to if not then you might just want it to generate who knows uh how you want it to be set up so i have to just to um spawn but not uh despawn for this tutorial with that being said, uh, we then need to uh, run the um, and player update tick uh, for the um, trades to actually work. So if we click on, um, I think it's this one. Yes, it's this one. So it's uh, set um, trade. I can't really read that in the string like that. It's a little bit too small on my monitor. Set trade uh, item um, I don't know I'm, I'm giving up on it so it's not that important it's just the name of the procedure so what we're doing here is we're setting the on player update tick and then we're testing if the player um, trade page is equal to one 
If that's true, then it's now then testing to see if there's an emerald in our um, emerald slot, so our slot for the trading itself. If that's true, then it'll be running this script here. I'll get into that in just a second, I'm collapsing that. Um, if it's if there isn't an emerald there, then we're removing the um, removing the amount of items. So this is our trade page one. So we're running the player trade count. So we're setting the amount that we're removing is equal to the same amount that we're going to be putting into the inventory uh, slot for our output slot, and we're setting that to be removed. So this will be for our slot, our trade slot. So this will be for the items that will be displayed and it's on the player side. So with that being said, um, we're targeting, targeting the player uh, trade item. If item ID is equal to one, remember I said that one was oak, two was spruce, three was birch, four was jungle, five, six was um, dark oak. So we're doing that and then we're setting the set amount. So this would be the amount normally and we're setting the amount to the randomly generated um, version for this particular page. So trade item one and trade count one would be used all the way across to for page one. So we're setting the item to slot one and then we're doing it for the provided player GUI. So that's basically what's happening in um, uh, the trade page one. Now, in order to change the page, you need to click the right or the next button or previous button. So we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, so if it's page two, then what's happening is the same thing. It's just using the different variables to determine the different trades. So in our case, we're testing if trade item two is equal to one, then we're setting it to oak saplings, um, spruce saplings, birch saplings, depending on the ID, you get the idea. Same exact procedure, we're making sure that we remove the same amount that the trade has as well. So, and lastly, our last uh, page is for um, oak planks or basically any plank variants that's using the uh, player trade item three and player trade count three. So when you have that all set up, what you can do is move on to uh, setting your next and previous buttons. So these are very simple and straightforward stuff. Uh, we need to test uh, if the player trade page is equal to whatever number. And uh, for example, if we're and we're on page one and we want to go to the next page, then we would set test for page one if variable uh, player trade page is equal to one, then we're setting it to two to go to the next page. If it's two, then we want it to go to three. So this is the next um, button procedure. And there's also one that does the exact opposite, which is testing if it's on uh, page three and it'll go to page two. If it's on page two, then it'll go to page one. And then the last thing that we need to do is when the item or the entity removes the item from the, the trade slot, what we need to do is remove the emerald from the um, the actual player, the, the emerald slot, but we only need to remove one. So what I've done is I've just basically set up a quick procedure to remove uh, one item from slot zero, which is our um, emerald slot for the current entity. And to put all that together, uh, what we need to do is go into our GUI and we need to configure our two slots first. So for the Emerald slot, what we're doing is we're basically setting the uh, trade item and amount for per page. Now that's the code for, uh, I believe it's this one. Yeah, it's this one right here. So this is the one that we basically set all the items to that particular thing based on the uh, variable uh, IDs and stuff like that. So we're setting that to when slot contents change. 
So you can save that as your emerald slot. For your trade slot, uh, what you want to do is set the uh, other one, which is remove emerald, this particular to your when item is taken from inventory slot and when I when transferred from shift click. So again, with the shift click, I'm not sure if there's a way to fix the bug that um, it removes two emeralds, but um, currently there I can't figure out a way to work around that particular bug, but it's still functional. It's just a, it re removes too much emeralds than normal. It's not going to affect any um, particular like uh, making uh, uh, players to have an advantage over other players because it's actually taking away extra emeralds rather than giving them extra items. So that should be fine. And then we need to set up our next and previous button. So we've just set our next uh, trade page button procedure to our next button and our previous uh, trade page uh, button to our previous button. And then you're all set up. You can click save and then you'll, you're ready to go. Um, now, thanks again to Marian for the texture and um, for the download and files that I've used in the um, particular workspace. Uh, you can download that from the project page. It will be available in the description of the video. So you can click on the website link that goes to the dedicated page. And then under the tutorial video, there will be a download for whatever latest download that I have available for this project. And you'll be able to get the procedures, the um, workspace and textures and stuff like that for the actual content that for of this video. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to uh, subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.